but then how are you oh i've been busy i've been really busy with work and uh and things what about you uh well kind of the same it's okay. the time of the year i guess yeah <laughs> yeah 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 mm. You left me uh, uh, quite a hard task, I have to confess, okay. <laughs> with this bird, uh, this bird Leningrad uh, with F4, G3, and Meta 3 um, We had to go through that. It, it was one of the variations that you told me mm -hmm. or you didn't know much about. Yeah, and it's quite rare. <laughs> really? I thought it was. Yeah. Main, I thought it was mainline bird. Yeah, yeah, well, the bird is rare. Yeah, okay, is, okay, okay. Uh, yeah. Rare enough. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, but uh, it's quite hard to find um, instructive, high rated games mm -hmm. because they are <laughs> quite messy, as you might have yeah. already seen. Mm -hmm. uh, people, for no apparent reason, just go knight a3 or a4 at some stage. Uh, if you went through some games, uh in the bird uh that's what typically happens uh we're trying we're, we're going to try to make sense of uh, some of white's ideas and uh try to see how you can face uh, uh this system so many alternatives that well ultimately you maybe have to make a repertoire choice against it uh if you play d5 and g6 uh then, well, you still have several options to fight against D3 and E4. Uh, this is the main setup. F4, D5, Knight F3, G6, and G3. What White is trying to do is, uh, well, as the same as in the Leningrad with Black, he's trying to get uh, a good King's Indian defense well, with colors uh, changed this time. <laughs> Uh, he wants to play bishop g2, d3, and at some point go e4, and it's a bit, it's quite better than in the King's Indian because you already have played uh, f4. It's not usually the case, I and mean, in the King's Indian you need to retreat and then play f4 if f5 in the case of black, and then you have to go back to f3. White is trying to, uh, well, save many tempi in setting up those pawns on uh, e4 and f4. Uh, and, well, he's a uh, half move ahead already. <laughs> uh, he's playing white. There are many ways to face this plan. Uh, well, bishop g7, bishop g2. And here's, his, here's your first... Hmm. Yeah. What do you think about that? What's that about? <laughs> uh... Yeah, no, I, I, I don't know. I can't make sense of it. I really can't. It looks strange, and it is. Uh, the thing is, White wants to play d3 and e4. Your plan is going to be, when he plays d3, you are going to play d4, and then the knight goes to f5. So you get, well, good control of e3. Mm. Uh, that's quite typical when you play White against the Leningrad, and it's an annoying plan. Uh, most likely, Black has to go when uh, with colors changed. If E seeds, D seeds, and Queen E7 in the case of well, the black pieces. Here, white is a bit faster than that, well, because he's white. <laughs> and so, after castles, castles, D3. Uh, possible to play Knight F5 at this stage, then you have great control over E3. Uh, e4 is not easy to play. Unfortunately for fortunately for white, and that's huge. Uh, control f3, knight f5, c5, ic6 is coming. Um, 
Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, oh, okay, okay. <laughs> um, but, well, of course, white uh, can fight against this. Apparently, this half move his head is of some use in this variation. C3, C5, and E4. Uh, D takes, bishop takes, and on principle, we like this structure. This is something to remember. Uh, one of Black's ideas is that after the pounds uh, on E4 and E5 are exchanged, we don't want white to take with the pound on principle. In, uh, this structure is something we will really like to uh, to obtain. Uh, well, because this F4 is kind of weakening for the white king, we have the semi-open D5. And our structure in general is maybe a bit better with black. Um, of course, the only problem is that white is uh, bursting with energy here. His pieces are quite active. Uh, but this line is interesting to have in mind because uh, as far as I saw, white has to be really accurate. I mean, and he has to be, uh, he has to play uh, very energetically. Otherwise, he can end up in a worse position. Um, and it, it's not that hard to, to get a bad position here with white. For example, let's say you just play normal moves. You go knight um, to d2, um, maybe knight to d7, queen e2, rook b8. Uh, we're ready to play b6, bishop b7, knight f5, and the position is great. Our better pawn structure is going to tell. Um, the thing is, of course, white has to play a bit more energetically with knight a3, and it's a bit... <laughs> Annoying for black who can keep defending this. <laughs> just, it just looks funny with those two knights like that. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the confusing confusing thing about this opening. Knight a three, knight h six are actually common moves here. Mm. Uh, so yeah, this yeah you have to go is. I believe, and then uh, you kind of struggle to bring your pieces out. It's, it's playable, and white has to be, uh, well, white has to be accurate, actually, uh, to make something of this. Uh, so this is something to consider. I mean, many of your opponents are not going to get that far, and you're probably going to put a knight on f5, <laughs> the other one on c6 or d7, and you you're going to be quite comfortable. So that knight h6 is an idea to bear in mind. Uh, so, well, but it's a bit of an eccentricity. Would you be willing to play something like that? I, w I would be willing because I haven't built m much of a repertoire against the bird. I mean, I... I have a few more moves in. I've got like kind of you know knight f6 and castling, and I think maybe like two more moves in. But that's that's as far as I know the bird. So yeah, because I haven't really put any time into this opening, I I am totally open to other ideas. Also, um, like I haven't looked in the in the I haven't looked in the database how common knight a6 is, but it. If it's not that common, it might be a possible interesting uh, weapon to get somebody out of their their prep, right? Um, although I'm sure bird players are probably aware of it, but um, maybe a lot less so than knight f6 here. Yeah, and if they are aware, well, uh, they sh should be quite strong players anyway. <laughs> um, yeah, the thing is, well, probably, Almost no one has a complete repertoire against the bird. I mean, it's it's time consuming to uh, to make a whole repertoire mm -hmm. against it, and it's not something that you're going to face every day. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's very rare. But <laughs> yeah, but having some uh, ideas against uh, well about how to face the three and e four is useful anyway, because you might encounter this structure 
well, if you play D4 with white, of course, <laughs> if you have to face the Leningrad, uh, then uh, knowing something about this is useful too. Uh, there's so many ways of facing the, uh, this system, and that's what kind of makes uh, it, make, it makes it hard to um, well to uh, to understand <laughs> the games that are played in this variation. You're going to notice that there are not many classical games, or mm. if any at all, <laughs> with the Leningrad uh, to start with. I think that's because uh, in his time, Taras condemned the Leningrad Dutch. <laughs> Uh, saying that it was an inferior defense, um, well, that was quite a theoretical statement by him. Uh, he was an authority, <laughs> so it was long considered, the Dutch in general has long uh, been considered not to be that great, and a four with white, of course, didn't uh, have that great a reputation. Uh, but of course, it's completely playable, and there are some eccentric ideas that uh, Tarash wouldn't have even considered in his time. Um, so, well, in this game, we're going to take a look at something which is normal. <laughs> uh, Knight of Seeds, Castles, Castles. This game, White play C3. Much more normal is to get there by playing D3 first. Uh, but just for this um, game, black plays C seeds, um, which might seem strange. What do you think I, that C seeds is all about? Well, I first of all, I don't think it's that strange because you know the the bishop on G two is is really hitting absolutely nothing now. So um, if I'm playing a bullet game, which I I rarely play bullet, but if I'm playing bullet or blitz, you know, I, I might. Against a, a Fianchetto, I often just play c6 because I think it's a pretty safe move because that bishop really had a hard time getting any any uh, scope. So uh, for that reason alone, I, I don't think it's that strange. But of course, it takes a square away from our knight and our own bishop. But yeah, that's that's what I see. It seems to do nothing about d3 and e4. Mm. Uh, but it actually the point regarding that also <laughs> oh yeah I, yeah i'm just going to say there is there is queen b6 as well um yeah and it's more annoying than uh one could imagine at first i mean black black species also display some uh well quite uh they're quite energetic after d3 queen b6 check in h1 and now some people go for knight g4. Uh, I've been investigating this variation a bit. Uh, after queen e1, he wants to play e4 anyway. This queen e1, well, you're going to see this a lot. Um, it's a useful move. Uh, you just want to play e4, and you have these two squares under control, e3 and f2. Uh, now that's especially important. So to make sense of this, you have to go 93. And I was getting enthusiastic about this uh, variation because it's not so easy to get this queen out of here, mm -hmm. out of e3. Um, it's a very beautiful game <laughs> uh, here. Um, just let. Oh, okay. I, I don't see it right now in the database. I think it's. Well, d4 has to be played. I'm sorry. No, yeah. I was just wondering maybe knight a3. Knight a3 to play yeah. knight c2 right yeah, away. Yeah. Could be. That could be. I guess you still have to play knight to d7. Your idea now is to um, well keep this queen here as long as possible so you can play e5. Uh, that's your thematic break. Okay, so maybe white is five in good conditions. You're not. Yeah, I would just uh, think. Maybe, what? Yeah, maybe white is spending too much time here dealing with that queen. So if if knight knight c two, just queen b six again, <laughs> and then and then um, uh, yeah, then he has to work with that pawn, and then it's our move again, right? 
Exactly. Example if goes root b1, if I when you get to play e5 in good conditions, and before I play c4, you're normally in good shape. <laughs> um, structure is going to favor you after the exchange is on e5. Uh, so this is good news. Uh, on queen takes e3, apparently d4 is the most accurate. You want to go knight e5 and rook f3, and that queen is a bit strange. There only sits. Uh, it's not the end of the world. I, I saw a very nice game here with F seeds. Um, I'm going to leave it here in the comments because it's it's quite beautiful. I'm I'm not sure it's that correct, uh, but Black shows an interesting idea here. After 92, 97, uh, Bishop H3, Knight B six. He's still. I mean, if I is always in the cards, but it's quite hard to deal with a queen now. Uh, I, of course, this idea of bishop h3 might not be uh, the best, though you still had this way out for the queen anyway. Uh, but after 95, it's Whoa. Uh, the idea is to trap the queen. Yeah. <laughs> but so I had that in mind. And after rook f3, he takes f4. Wow. And he sacrifices the queen, but he gets on white's position with that pawn on e3. Uh, that it's quite hard to. Um, well, the game went on for many moves, but um, but it, it was quite a beautiful win for for Black. He never let go of the pawn on e3. He even sacrificed this wow. for two pieces. Interesting. With the pawn e3, he was just too powerful. <laughs> interesting. Um, I, I, I'm sorry. What? I just said interesting. It's. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm not entirely sure how correct is all of this, mm. but uh, I went through this game and it seemed pretty at, at least. <laughs> so. Well, back to study knight pv7. This is what well, way more um, positionally justified. I mean, knight g4, knight e3 is nice because we eliminate the bishop, uh, but it's a bit risky. The queen on e3. I mean, it's a variation to study. Um, it gives black reasonable results, but knight pv7 followed by rook e8 and e5 is a main plan for uh, black. Knight a3, well, this, this sort of move is quite commonplace here. Knight c2, and white even tries to play on the queen side with b4, a4. That's quite common uh, in these structures because sometimes it's just hard to fight in the center to get e4 in. Uh, so white starts play on the queen side also. The structures, well, as you're going to see, are very strange at times. <laughs> um, white takes a lot of risks, positionally speaking. Uh, but if his pawns start rolling, then uh, it's also dangerous for black. Uh, that's the main feature, I guess, of uh, uh, of this opening. Uh, in this case, that knight a3 actually looks really strange. And I, I'm only interested in this game because of this structure that you have to bear in mind. Uh, this is almost always better for black. I mean, the, this backward pawn is so easy to put uh, under pressure. Um, well, your whole pawn structure is generally healthier here. Um, for white, it's almost always important to play e4 when his pawn is still on f4, so that both his pawns reach the fourth rank and they take under control some important central squares. And normally you have to be able to fight back with e5 as black. Otherwise, white plays e5 and he just suffocates you. Uh, so the fight to see who gets there first with e4 or e5 is quite important. In the variation, uh, that's something to take note of. 
this game was a bit one-sided. I mean, White reacted with E4, um, which is a bit sad. Uh, I mean, D takes E4 was okay already, but well, Black went for a full attack. Uh, he maybe he gave up uh, a bit of his leverage in terms of positional play, but he still has. I mean, with C takes D5, he still doesn't let this knight back to the game, and the attack looks quite dangerous, to be honest. Um, well, White just tried to exchange some pieces, but his pieces are quite energetic anyway. And he gives up this pawn and might not be entirely necessary, but if um, on D4, Bishop D3 is a problem now, so <laughs> knight D6, Bishop takes. And the game kind of loses a bit of interest, in, interest here. Both make mistakes, black takes with the bishop he should have taken with the pawn. Of course, this bishop is just too important a piece. And I don't know what happened here. Maybe time trouble because he had to try his luck. Being a pawn down in the end game, but it's the best thing. Uh, this is too sad already. Uh, it's just a full pound down for nothing, I guess. Uh, so that's one of the ideas. Uh, reaching five first. <laughs> uh, that's not usually what happens. Um, normally, black, uh, I mean, white plays e4, and you have to answer with e5 yourself after taking on e4 on a4. Um, Oh, so this this game isn't about that yet. But this is a higher profile game. Uh, but there's a Kieran. Um, a different move order. And this time around, white played with knight to c3. Uh, well, this is another device to take into consideration. When white doesn't play c3, which is quite often, um, you can play D4 yourself, and kind of forces this structure that, we, and you get a similar structure to what we saw, um, which is positionally desirable. Uh, what problem do you think there can be with playing D4 in general? Sorry, uh, you cut off on, on that last sentence. Oh, what do you think is usually the problem with playing d4 in these positions? Well, I mean, we, we there's, a, there's a big hole on, well, a bit of a hole on e5, so we're not controlling, oh, sorry, on e4. Um, e4, that's one thing I, I see here. Um, I'm also not sure how, well, we could probably hang on to d5. Um, so I don't think that's a problem. It's, to me, I'm, I'm a little bit worried about, about e4. Um, Yeah. Um, in general, when you play d4, normally you have to follow with c5. Um, of course, this creates weaknesses on the light squares. Uh, that's why we want to play d4, especially when white goes knight c3. Uh, when white still hasn't played knight c3, uh, normally we refrain a bit from, from d4. Uh, except in some variations where you want to get a grip on e3, uh, because white then can start playing on the queen side. For example, a4, knight a3, the knight goes to c4 uh, much more easily. Uh, after knight c3, on the other hand, d4 is a bit more annoying, uh, because there are not so many good squares for the knight, and you get the grip you wish. Uh, 
to come on on E3. Uh, this game is surprisingly one-sided for such a high level. Uh, I don't know what happened to it in this game, but well, it's quite an illustration of what can go wrong. Uh, 95 is okay here. I mean, you're getting the grip you usually like there, and white has to go a long way to try and destroy the, the D4 pawn. Uh, but I like uh, Lack's approach. He just goes for uh, uh, takes, bishop takes, or even e takes to open the file. Uh, if white it changes, that's another thing. If white it changes too many pieces too soon, uh, then his e4 and his uh, piece activity is going to be uh, well, not so great. Uh, I mean, in it's quite fundamental of white's uh, approach that he's weakening. Uh, the surroundings of his king a bit, and his pawn structure is not always the soundest. Uh, that's something to have in mind. So if you can absorb his initiative, then uh, you're going to be fine, and um, many times more than fine. He needs to find um, active posts for his pieces, otherwise he's, uh, he's just going to suffocate. That's what happened this game. Um, once black develops uh, and he's comfortable, then things can go really downhill and quite fast for white. Uh, well, this is reasonable. You have to hit uh, the pound. 95 is quite common in these positions uh, to open up diagonal, but uh, in this case, I don't know, but 97 is coming too fast and you can't support an idea. Uh, so when you get something like what happened in this game, then you're completely comfortable. This pawn is a thorn <laughs> uh, on his side. Uh, knight c4. And now check out this maneuver. Bishop e6. What's that for? What's that about? Uh... I, the first thing I'm looking at is to to go to d5 to try to trade off those bishops, but I'm just wondering about um, knight e4 or e4. Um, if e4, he'll have a, a really ugly d3 pawn after after on plus on, and if if knight e4, so if bishop, it's, if it's bishop, yeah, if bishop d5, knight e4, um, I think same thing. We just go, we just go knight takes and then bishop takes. Yeah. So. Yeah. Okay. This, this trade will be great. Uh, trading light square bishops is a uh, well, a huge position of goal goal for. It just kind of reminds me um, for black. of... If you think that, well, normally you, you're going to be better. Yeah, it just kind of reminds me of um, one of the thematic moves in, what? In, in the last opening that we looked at, the Nimzo uh, Larson, where black will often try to take uh, the try to trade the bishop on B2. It, it, this is a very same idea. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you try to exchange dark square bishops. This is even worse for black because for white. I'm sorry, because this bishop is instrumental to the defense of his king. Uh, so that uh, uh, that's an, an extra problem for white. I mean, this bishop is even more key <laughs> than the dark square bishop in the Nimco Dawson. This is dangerous already for white if he, if he trades light square bishops here. I mean, something has clearly gone wrong for uh, <clears throat> for white in the opening here. I mean, he got no real no real activity for his pieces. He's about to uh, well, be compelled to uh, exchange light square bishops. I mean, something has gone horribly wrong. Uh, 
<laughs> um, which is kind of surprising for such a strong player. Uh, that's something to have in mind. You have to know that your opponent needs to make very accurate and very energetic moves, or else he can end up in a situation like this. Uh, that's why I like the plan, and you might want to investigate it further. With knight h6 and knight, h and knight f5, um, I think that the variation I left there is the, more, the, the most challenging for black. And still white has to find some, uh, some strong moves to make you uncomfortable. And it's not even that. Uh, I mean, that knight a3, we saw it. It's not that it's the size of anything. It's still playable. But if white doesn't uh, get to play all the active moves he should, uh, then it's easy to uh, get the lost position. That happens to me a lot when I want to play, for example, in Blitz, uh, the Dutch. <laughs> uh, since I'm not so well acquainted with the idea, sometimes I just make one or two passive moves and I end up with a horrible position. <laughs> uh, that's, that's quite common. Um, to see that many bird players uh, at your level are, are going to have that problem, especially against uh, these maneuvers that are, well, directly uh, directly uh, designed against this, this real e4. <laughs> uh, so getting nice positions there. This is quite ugly already. He tried to develop some initiative, but this is just too good. Um, well, this was almost a miniature. <laughs> I was just going to say, it's, it's, it's only uh, it, it's move 16. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this is move 16. And he's, I don't know if he's losing, but his position is not pretty. At the very least. I mean, we are threatening b5, and entering e3. Uh, so he played queen c1, rook a c8, but this is horrible already. I mean, uh, he's even giving up <laughs> and the exchange to see if he gets some color play and Black doesn't even want to take it right away. He prefers to uh, to switch to the attack and then he takes the rook and uh, well, this is already completely losing, of course. Uh, well, kind of a tragedy. And what did White do that was so wrong? I mean, how, how did, yeah. did he end up in such a, a horrible position. He just made a couple of shallow moves. Uh, he never got to play e4 himself. He allowed black to get a grip there on e3, and then he made some passive moves. Normal, but passive. I mean, knight e5, after queen c7, we liquidate this knight here with knight pd7, and we have a huge space advantage and many weaknesses uh, are left on White's camp. Uh, I think this game, uh, I mean, I, I chose these games from the many I saw, which didn't convince me that much, uh, because it really shows what happens to White if he really doesn't play with uh, the most energy. Um, you get to develop your pieces uh, in a good way, and for, in fact, if he doesn't play with energy, he never gets his two pounds of f4 and e4, which is kind of the whole point of the system. White is trying to play um, a reverse King's Indian, um, and well, a better King's Indian with a pawn already on f4. If he doesn't get to do that, at least he needs to have uh, really active pieces. Uh, that's what explains these strange maneuvers you often see with a4, knight a3, with knight jumps to c4, b5, uh, and even c3, b4, and all that that very strange pawn structure, but activity on the queen. Queen so he needs. It's a big strategical risk for white too, and that's something to consider. Uh, well, this game might be a, a bit more typical. Uh, here we are moving to, I'm sorry, we are see this from next perspective. 
just let me turn the ball. Yeah. Uh, this is a more normal approach. Uh, I'm just giving, well, this is the, this should be uh, considered the main starting position. This if you don't play with, <laughs> with the Nyon H seeds. Um, well, there are many ways to face E4. C5 is still probably the main move. Uh, we're just playing uh, the Leningrad Dutch with reversed colors. Uh, I prefer this approach with a top fianchetto. I don't know. I mean, you never liked fianchettos, <laughs> and I'm trying to make you play double fianchetto. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> well, uh, but I do, I do fianchetto because um, in uh, against d4, like I play uh, um, I, like against the against the London system. I I fianchetto on the queen side, and I uh, also play the queen's Indian. But I never, I never uh, fianchetto on the king side. Like never. That's that's what I definitely don't do. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and now this is a double fianchetto. <laughs> uh, I'm attracted to this because it's directed uh, against e4. I mean, we're trying to prevent e4 for as long as possible while we are just putting our pieces in reasonable squares. Um, there are many ways to play this uh, with the white pieces. Um, but the main thing is you want to get e4 in, and that's what most of your opponents are going to do, probably. Uh, so you can start here with white, with c3, queen e1, and I think both are the main moves. There are some plans with knight e5, just not to uh, make it easy to play uh, nice seats in any case, but that's not such a huge problem. You just go bishop d7, knight d7, and it's not such a big deal. I mean, white kind of uh, gives up on e4 for some time. <laughs> uh, I guess the main tries you have to acknowledge here are c3 and queen e1. Uh, Bishop b7, and now e4. <laughs> uh, and, and that's one of the things uh, usually does in these positions. Uh, I like this game because uh, it's quite typical of how you develop as black, and it's quite typical of what you're going to encounter by some clever opponents who try to create activity on the queen side while they still retain the possibility of maybe playing e4. Uh, it looks a bit twisted, and it kind of is, but it's the nature of this opening. Uh, even Black does this when he plays the Leningrad Dutch. Uh, I always found it so annoying because you don't really know where he's playing. Sometimes he just starts, he, he pushes a4, uh, in his case, in Black's case, a5, knight a6, rook b8, and then all of a sudden he's trying to play b5, so he's suddenly playing on the queen side. <laughs> uh, and it's a bit strange because, well, it's uh, it's not a classical structure or anything like that. It's a big strategical risk, but he's striving for activity, I guess. Uh, in this game, he played c5. Quite natural because now a5 is not easy to achieve. You just take and then play nice e6. Uh, so queen c2, knight bd7. Uh, still e4 is off limits. And you're now prepared, I guess, even in the case he plays rook e1 and e4, you're prepared to take and play e5 yourself, which is. Um, well, it's quite a typical device. For example, let's say he plays rook e8. We play a uh, rook e1. I'm sorry. We play rook e8. For you, when you take, you have to take into account that this should be a possibility. You have to expose these pawns. If you let him play e5, then well, he's he's achieving a lot. <laughs> uh, he's depriving you of many squares, and he's 
just grabbing too much space. Now his pawns are in danger, and this is well quite a typical scenario for this uh, Dutch. Um, but I guess this is quite good for you because you're better developed. Uh, some moves are a bit out of place for this plan to play uh, d3, e4 quickly. For example, a4 doesn't make much sense anymore. Maybe not queen c2. Uh, so on g5, you can even take. Oh, that's weird. Take and play e4. And this is a mess, but <laughs> you actually. I uh, have a lot of activity for you after 95. Um, but that, that's another reaction you, you need to have in mind. If white plays e4 in good conditions and he can keep both pounds on e4 and f4, you need to be able to put pressure on those pounds. So e5 is, uh, well, a fun fundamental resource. If you don't have this e5 at hand, then uh, you probably should try to uh, to fight against the possibility of, for white to to, um, to obtain these two pounds in the center. If um, if we yeah. if we play um, e5 there and white plays f5, um, can we just not take on f5 and just I don't know something like rook a c8 and um, let white take on g6 and just you know, h takes g6 actually yeah uh, yeah totally i i remember the, there's a game by uh sandro mareco um well uh, one of our best players uh an argentinian grandmaster um and in a very similar position he plays c4 here <laughs> um the thing is, yeah, you have to play actively, and sometimes g takes is not going to be the best reaction, though it's quite thematical uh, to take and play e4. There might be other ideas. c4 is one of them to activate this knight and put pressure on e4. Mm -hmm. um, you do have to play actively, otherwise, uh, white is also going to try to steamroll you <laughs> on the king side, probably with h3, g4. Uh, but yeah, as long as you keep him, uh, I'm sorry, as long as you keep him worried about something, uh, these ideas also seem to make sense. I'm not so sure about rook c8 right now because I, but I don't find an immediate use for the rook on c8. Um, what was the idea behind rook? C8? I was just looking for a move of not taking on f5. <laughs> Okay, yeah, a useful move that, uh, well, that asks White to reveal his intentions, and uh, that's okay. Yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah. So maybe uh, the, the C certainly is the option of moving. Yeah, the C four idea is is interesting, um, and I guess our threat is too fast. Like if if knight knight B D. Sorry, I guess you can do that. So if let's say Queen E two and Knight B D two. Um, we're just going to take on e4 and and we're faster, I guess. So it's right. I mean, um, knight c5, knight c5, yeah. and, and um, our the trading trading the c the c4 pawn for the e4 pawn is in black's favor. Yeah, it's a that that's a great trade off. <laughs> okay. Um. Yeah, his center is basically falling. Yeah, I guess bishop takes, right? Because then we can even threaten to take on f5. Yeah, everything seems to fall apart. You can take with the bishop, I guess. Yeah. And bishop d3 and e4 is a thing too. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is... This almost seems too good to be true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you get okay. this, then... Be careful about knight g5, <laughs> but oh, yeah, we, yeah. we well, will have bishop d5, and this is not great. <laughs> it had to be foreseen, I guess. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that, that's an important reaction. Having e5 at hand uh, is quite important. Here, it, it even favors you, I guess. Uh, 
yeah, you, you, you're uh, threatening to take already, and if he doesn't go F5, well, he can take on E5, but this pawn gets uh, quite exposed, and that's sort of what for. Uh, in the game, the move was knight A3, um, and we're going to see what white is intending. And it's quite typical when it's not so easy to play E4, and it's strange to call this typical, but it happens a lot in these variations. Queen C7, this is another intelligent develop, developing move because we are all already uh, looking at that move, E5. Uh, knight B5 is not a problem. We just go to B8 and then push the knight back. The knight hasn't lost anything on B5. <laughs> uh, Bishop D2, A6. Not entirely sure that's necessary, but looks right. Uh, before this was the idea by by White. He's just taking over some space, but Black also has normal development. He has put his pieces in very reasonable squares, and I actually prefer Black here. I mean, the the structure is sounder. Um, you didn't do anything crazy. Of course, it's a fighting game, and you might get many positions like this when you face third players because what well, they are looking for imbalanced games and for strange yeah. <laughs> structures. That's why they play this kind yeah. of stuff. So uh, you're going to face some queen side pushes that look a bit odd, uh, and they might be completely sound <laughs> uh, because they may not be prepared to play in the center because you. You have all the resources to expose the pounds. Uh, and they may start uh, pushing the queen side pounds. And it's not as strange as you might think <laughs> uh, at first sight. It, it's hard to get used to, but, um, but you also have to know that if you're not going to punish them directly for doing this, because it's actually reasonable, uh, at least you have a very healthy position. And it's up to them to prove that they can get away with playing like this, I guess. Um, rook a c8, well, rook a b1, bishop a8, just getting out of the way. Um, well, black has a normal position in the game. He actually found a very nice move at some point that tilted the game towards <laughs> his side. Uh, well, I really like this maneuver now. And it's quite typical if white uh, doesn't get enough activity in the center. The knight on f6 is, well, you could say it's a bit restricted, but now we are going to d6. On this seats, it reaches even more squares, while it does the same it is doing on, on f6, which is controlling e4. Um, it, I mean, it, it, it's also, uh, it has to do with the tactic. What happens if e4? Oh, I'm sorry. It's okay. I, no, I'm sorry, I messed up. <laughs> um, 98, yeah, okay. If E4. If E4 now. So I don't know what this has to do. So I'm, 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 okay, hang on. I don't know how this knight move would have uh, affected it. I was just looking at his knight might get trapped. Oh, I guess he could take with the rook. I was looking at um, I was looking at e4, d e, d e, and then c b. Uh, but he could just he can just take with the uh, the rook. Um, I don't see how that knight. I don't see how the the knight on d7 
effects that if e4. Yeah, it's true that you can take with the rook. Uh, I'm not sure you're losing anything immediately, but it looks like a5 is dangerous there. Um, there are not so many good places for the rook, I guess, because if you go back all the way to b1, then there's a check on c5 and the knight is hanging there on a3. A check on a5 did you say check on c5 on c5 so yeah i was thinking about if c takes yeah. rook takes something like a5 uh -huh. something like a5 and when the rook has to go somewhere um so sure where because if we we I, I was saying we can't go all the way back to b1 because well there is this check on c5 yeah yeah well plus i mean now he has an isolated c pawn very weak c pawn now yeah um yeah his structure ends up being completely destroyed um he's probably losing some material there because if rook b if the rook goes back to b3, then we have knight c5 hitting e4 and hitting the rook. Wait, wait. Uh, oh, uh, oh, I see. He has to go to b3, otherwise we, we have a fork on the knight and king, right? Yeah. So, yeah, king okay. c5 is yeah. the so, so rook b3. And, and then, yeah. We, oh, I see. And then we take and play knight c5, probably. What, 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 what? what? Oh, you wanted to do that right away before before okay because i was looking at i was looking at de right away as i, I was looking at e4 de um you mean after e4 yeah i was looking at c takes or D no i was looking at de de and then cb even more clear i'm sorry what uh, I, can't hear. I didn't say anything Oh, I'm sorry. That's why I could be. <laughs> uh, uh, you say now C takes B? Yeah. So I thought C, B, Rook takes. Yeah. And then A5. Yeah, I was a bit reluctant to play like this because this time around he has mm. Rook C4. It's not great, but it's something. <laughs> um, maybe we go knight c5. Yeah, or knight c5. Knight c5. Yeah, this is. And then yeah, maybe mm. five. Maybe five, so that we don't have to face this knight d6. I mean, I still take black here. Uh, I would take black. Though, I f I'm sorry. I'm so I just want to go back a bit because I'm actually thinking this might be more accurate, maybe. So that he doesn't get to play rook c4. Mm. And if he doesn't achieve that, then I think he's probably in very bad shape. So rook b3, <laughs> um, rook b3 now. Rook b3 now, and... Now we take... Yeah, uh, now it takes, takes and knight c5, something uh, like this. Okay. Yeah, hmm. you can defend the rook and the pawn, yeah. Yeah, and maybe we're threatening bishop c4, bishop c6. <laughs> Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. Although I guess he he has to he has to move the rook right now, anyways. So, but yeah, so he moves the rook and then bishop c six or even. 
Yeah. Uh, Bishop takes, bro. Oh, right. Yeah, we could just do that. Yeah. Bishop takes and then yeah, Bishop no. C6. <laughs> yeah. yeah okay. And the battery and all that. <laughs> yeah, so E4 is just leaving white in a horrible situation. But this is quite thematic. Uh, this is one of White's idea. He wants to take over the dark squares. Uh, he's not in a position to do so, especially, uh, I mean, the culprit is this knight on a3. Uh, White didn't find a, a reasonable way. Uh, well, b5, d4, this was the idea. Sometimes White changes things to a kind of stonewall. <laughs> um, C takes d4, C takes d4. Well, it's changing. Queens actually helps white uh, bring his knight back to the game. Uh, what, black would be OK. I mean, in fact, I still take black because his pieces are in complete harmony, <laughs> um, which is more than we can say for, for white species. But there's something that. I'm not certain if it's stronger, but it's quite flashy. <laughs> um, and yeah, it puts a lot of pressure on white. Black played 96. What's that about? <laughs> he's, he's leaving this pawn to his own fate. Yeah, I was just looking at like 94 and then I was looking at possibly taking or on C3. I was just looking if that works tactically, but it wouldn't if he takes on C5. Um, but it has to be. I mean, it, it to me, it doesn't make any sense other than 94. Just. Yeah, the thing is, the knight is arriving quite fast to C4 after the exchange. Uh, on b4 or on d4. The point is that if pawn takes, we can just take the pawn thanks to this tactic. <laughs> oh. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, and now his structure is just ruined. So you can take, but also if you, you don't take uh, this backward pawn, it's just horrible. And that's the whole point. You just don't define the structure. And you're going to blockade everything with a huge knight on c4. Um, do we do we want the knight? Well, there? that's what happened in the game. Queen. Eight. Do we want to allow white to trade that? I'm sorry. What? Do we want white? Do we want to allow white to trade his knight on a3? Though, it, to me, that seems like a favorable trade for that, white. Yeah, th and that's a very good question because this knight is quite miserable. Uh, I think it has to do with the fact that uh, if we get the pass pawn on c4 and we open the diagonal for this bishop, it might be worth it. Okay. But consider, uh, yeah, always taking into account the specifics uh, of the situation. Uh, as white played this, probably it makes sense because the knight is trying to recycle itself through C2 anyway. I mean, it's not that it's it looks great or anything on C2, um, but at least it has somewhere to go. Uh, after queen a7, well, he was kind of forced to play e3, further weakening the light squares. And yeah, the thing is, the light squares are so so weak that now it makes sense because if he takes you're going to take with the pawn and then we, we're going to to have a party on d5 and e4 <laughs> um yeah this this looks quite terrible for white yeah, so I, many holes on the leg yeah i love i love black's pawns on the queen side <laughs> yeah he he i mean white always has to be uh well, attentive to that pawn on, on c4. But yeah, there's no way uh, white is 
uh, wrestling the control of Tiff five and if four now from black uh, yeah this is quite awful positionally uh, the whole point I mean taking on c4 is so ugly positionally speaking that uh, even if white gets rid of this bad knight he just gets um, I mean the situation turns even worse <laughs> um, so he played knight e5 first um, I like how he changes the pace here because he takes and he hits the pawn on e3 immediately. Um, and always there's this that there's always this problem that the light squares just suffer too much <laughs> if you go for this. I mean the, the pawns are completely immobile, of course, because uh, our pieces are hitting e3 and d4 quite hard. And if we change the light square of bishops, then a queen arrives on e4. And, uh, quite ugly for white. Also, f6 is coming and white's king is is in trouble. Uh, so, yeah, th this should be close to losing <laughs> already for white from a positional point of view. Well, f6 is a good move. We activate our rooks. Um, well, rook bd1, I guess it, it has to do with bishop c1, defending everything, but it's a bit passive. Uh, rook fc8, bishop c1. And finally, the move we always want to make uh, now uh, is quite powerful. Um, yeah, if pawn takes, we take with the knight, I guess. Or rook f2 first, and we then take with the knight, and we threaten the knight. Takes, yeah, looks like too much. So knight takes, d takes, and d5. Well, otherwise, we, we can't let go of this bishop with all our pawns and dark squares, so, or else <laughs> uh, black just penetrates through dark squares. So d5 makes sense. Rook d8. Um, the pawn is well blockaded, I guess. Really def defended himself quite well, <laughs> uh, all things considered. But he he always is in some trouble here, I guess. Bishop takes, queen takes, and this pawn is the decisive factor. This one is quite... Um, quite weak, and the pawn on c4 can always move forward. forward. Uh, bishop takes, bishop takes, bishop takes, rook takes. And, well, white went for this. He probably has to play here, queen c2, I guess. But what, what would you play here as black? There is a good, a good risk-free approach. Well, I mean, the first thing I look at, I mean, considering that we have an advanced pass pawn is to liquidate the rooks and then um, maybe like queen b2. Uh, looks good to me or possibly. I'm sorry. Oh, did I cut out there? Uh, yeah, may maybe I... Uh, maybe I didn't hear something. I, I okay. heard uh, Queen B two. But... Oh, <laughs> I, I was saying, uh, <laughs> I was saying that um, because of our advanced passed pawn, um, I might just like to simplify here, trading the rooks and then Queen B two. So rook takes, rook takes, rook takes, uh, Queen takes. Well, I guess he's got. He might have a perpet, so we got to be careful about that. Um, I wonder maybe yeah. then. Maybe then I prepare it with uh, queen e7 so that I can, I'm can. i threatening to trade the rooks and then I'm threatening to take on e3 at the end there. Um, yeah, you can start with queen e7 because you still have this other move that I, I, I think it makes sense to, to, to put a rook there. Um, 
maybe your your move is even better because here I'm a bit suspicious about rook takes. He might get away with taking and playing rook d1 next. Um, yeah, that, that might be a resource for, for white. So yeah, queen here first so that we hit the pawn and we're threatening to play rook d3, kind of dominating this queen. I mean, it's kind of vital that his queen doesn't activate and gives us many checks. Um, yeah, I guess this is really hard to play for white. Um, I don't know if that was a reason uh, because he was still quite solid. After this, uh, there's a thing with the two rooks against the queen. Uh, when the kings are exposed, the queen tends to be much better than the rooks. And I think that what happened here. Every pawn fell and, well, the c-pawn is just too quick. So, well, of course, this is losing already. Both pawns advance and, and now what we sign. Uh, well, this game is more typical of what you see <laughs> when your opponent uh, has all the tricks in his bag. He he also pushes the queen. So in, in this game, um, in this game, he kind of failed uh, to to achieve anything. I guess this doesn't go well with the queen on c2. Maybe with the queen on d1. You go knight c2, rook b1, b4, and it makes a, a bit more sense because this knight never got into play. Uh, but well, that's a detail. As you see, you have some. Uh, there, there are many ways of facing this d3 and e4. Sometimes you play d4 first so that you don't let the two pounds be on f4 and e4. And I think that if you have to get an idea of how to play against this, you need to know that when he plays e4 and he gets to keep both pawns on the fourth rank, you need to be able to fight back with e5. Otherwise, uh, most of the time you end up being suffocated by those pawns. So, well, in some variation we saw that white could play e4, but you have to take and play e5 right away. Um, you need to have that resource. Uh, well, we saw other resources to make his life a bit more difficult if he's going to play for e4. Um, fortunately, there are many resources there, and that's going to be uh, the most important idea your, your opponents are going to have, probably, because uh, if they play this, uh, they play it with that idea to get the pawns on e4 and f4. It, it gets more nuanced <laughs> when you see high-level games. For example, Nakamura plays this with white, and you see him making a lot of strange moves on the queen side, and suddenly things get really messy, and he gets the upper hand, but I don't think you have to worry about that that much. Uh, yeah, it's even hard to understand for very strong players, and he plays them, so uh, I, I'm, <laughs> I'm not so sure that's what you should be expecting of, of uh, well, the vast majority of your opponents. That there, there are games which are really hard to understand in this variation. I mean, they, they always combine some slow play in the center with e3, queen e2, then suddenly a4, knight e3, and it's hard to make sense of all of it. But, well, the, the main ideas are to grab some space on the queen side. And the main idea is to play e4 and get these two pounds on f4 and e4. Uh, so, those are, so, um, the... are, are probably the the main idea for white <laughs> so the first two ideas you went over um i do think i they, they look kind of interesting to me so what what do you think uh for you like out of though you kind of went over three ways to play as black you went over uh knight h6 um and then you went over a c6 queen b6 with ideas of queen e3 or 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 was that related? Was that related to the knight? Uh, I can't remember. I think it was related, C6 right? Queen B2. Yeah, yeah well, knight bb seven, rook e eight, that, five. That yeah. was that was that was that was related to knight h six, right? The c six, queen b six. C six, queen b six. Yeah, uh, we saw again with knight bb seven, rook e eight, and e five. 
Yeah, but I don't. And mean, then, but I, I mean the one where uh, the one where there where there where it was the the queen it's, the queen was on e three. Um, oh, there was a knight g four and ninety three in the. Oh, it was, oh, it was g four. But yeah, but it so it went, but it was from h six. That was the knight h six line, right? Uh, no, oh, no, the it was gonna... okay. Okay, so that's so that that was a separate line. Okay, yeah, but both of lines were kind of interesting to me. So the early, the very early knight h six, just to come into f five and just be, um, be a little, a little unorthodox, yeah. I guess you could say. And that... and and also the other line, the other line that I was talking about, the c six queen b six, um, and then knight g four. That was interesting too, I think because. I think because it, it might look unusual and white might not really be prepared for this or it might be, you know, it might take time off its clock to <laughs> to deal with it. Um, so yeah. those were two were kind of interesting. How 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 high do you think those openings could be played at? Those two lines. Um, well, this is almost a tabia. I mean, uh... He goes d3. You're going to get this position most of the time. This is it, an idea. I mean, it's quite present in the Leningrad, but I'm not sure your opponents are going to be that much prepared for it. So c3 looks reasonable. I, I would I would expect if c sits that many of your opponents are going to play king h1 uh, just in case. Uh, if they are not well prepared, I, I would expect a move like this. And but that's not a problem for you. You can still play for knight bd7, rook e8, and e5, which is quite thematic. And, um, and it's actually quite comfortable, I guess, here. Um, on knight h6, I guess you could... Uh, against knight h6, I guess this would happen most of the time. Otherwise, it's just hard to know what white would play. <laughs> if you don't go c3 and try to destroy the pawn on d4, I don't know what you do as white here. Uh, so c3, c5, and well, I'm not certain how your opponents are going to respond mm -hmm. here. Um, e4 is the best move, and many of them are going to play it like this. And this is a position to examine if you want to play the, the variation with knight h6. I guess this is quite critical. Queen c7 or queen b6 are the main moves, I guess. Ooh. And this is where you have to maybe have something prepared to know how you're going to untangle your queen side pieces. Uh, the thing is, if you succeed and your opponent doesn't play with uh, that much energy, uh, the difference in the pawn structure is going to turn, and you're going to be better. Uh, for example, here, knight bd2 is on knight bd2, which is not good. I, I guess knight g4 is the best here because you get this vision. Um, knight a3 is the most um, challenging. Uh, it's still quite playable. I've seen games. Maybe the main position to examine if you're going to play with knight h6. I mean, this is, this is the best course of action for black. Um, and even there, it's not such a big deal. Um, but there's a game here that, uh, yeah, I saw this game. It ended with draw. Um, yeah, white ended up playing d4 himself. Otherwise, you play. Rook b8, b6, and bishop b7. Sometimes you even get to play b6 right away. You have to be a bit careful about this stuff, but uh, but in, in any case, you, you're going to play rook b8 and b6 and bishop b7, or bishop b6, and be comfortable if white does nothing about it. So d4 came in this game, and it became a bit messy, but if you eliminate that bishop, you, I, I guess you can't be worse, at the very least. Uh, well, this fizzled out to a draw, but I'm, I'm not entirely sure if that was necessary. I guess you can keep tension here. I see it's knight of six. Uh, 
But in any case, um, looks playable if you want to uh, to investigate night edge seeds a bit further. See, seeds is also a good alternative. Um, I mean, there, there are just so many ways of, mm. of playing against this. The benefit of night edge seeds or seeds seed is that uh, your opponents are probably not going to be that well prepared for them. I mean, they, they are not the most common. And mm. uh, night edge seeds and B seeds uh, is relatively more uh, mainstream. <laughs> Uh, but it's also not uh, uh, I, I guess the, the the variation that is played the most is C5 and C5 uh, mm -hmm. after Knight of Seeds is Seeds because it's D5 and C5 that, that's the absolutely main mm -hmm. line so any of these options should should be fine and your opponents are, I guess they're not going to be uh, completely armed to death <laughs> against any of these. Um, have you? We are ha still left with a trope. Yeah. Well, I was just going to ask: yeah. have, you, have you ever faced the bird over the board uh, as black? Yeah, uh, yeah, and I played um, a really weird uh, variation. I played with B five. Uh, not with G seeds, but I played Night Age seeds anyway. Oh. In fact, I don't recall if I played Night Age seeds right away because F4 Night Age seeds is an option, believe it or not. Mm. <laughs> and I played it in Blitz. Oh. Uh, because if E4, you can play D5 quite quickly and you get F5 for the night anyway. Um, I don't know how serious it is, but it's playable. <laughs> um, yeah, I got a nice position out of the opening net, and and then I just stopped and I lost mm. the game. <laughs> but uh, I was winning at some point. Mm. Yeah, it wasn't the fault of the opening. I, I can't blame my setup. <laughs> okay. uh, that was that was all me. <laughs> um, so we still have to see something against the Tromboski. That was the. Oh, yeah, well, I think that was... I was just curious about B6 uh, after the main line. Um, I was just curious why the engine didn't really like it. Um, yeah, oh, but... I, I saw that one. Yeah. Uh, can you put it here in the study? Um, well, I don't remember the exact game, but we can just create a new, a new board. Um, but it was just... It was the... I'll try, I'll try to do it from memory but it's just the the main line yeah. Trumpowski and I forget what I like to play I I think I actually play I play d5 because um it it, it can transpose yeah. it can transpose to the I forget the name of this Richter something uh the name of this position do you know and yeah, now this is kind of hard to or sorry Do you know? Yeah, the... it's got a bit there. This you... is the Verasov now. Oh, the Verasov, yeah. Uh, Victor Verasov, I think. Um, yeah, so I, I, because this can transpose, yeah. uh, this can transpose, I think, from uh, here as well. So that's why I play D5 against the Trumpowski, because I, so I can transpose into that. Whoops. Um, sorry. Um, yeah, that's why I play. I, I, d5 and then five. takes and i know you can take with a g pawn but i ultimately decided to go with the e pawn and then i'm trying to remember is it what is what's the main line here is it e3 i don't i don't have access to the book here so i'm trying to go off no wait wait this can't be right is this what i was looking at because i was wondering why i couldn't play b6 oh, you're not, you're not. Well, I guess if if we went, if you go to um, the the history, yeah, there, there was. If you go far enough in our uh, inbox history, you will you will see the 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 line. Yeah, that that's what I'm trying to. Okay. It's a bit slow. Yeah, here it is. You got it. Okay. I'm going to open the game and then I'm going to add it to a study. Second. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, yeah, it's here. I will add it. Add this to the study. I, I it's examine your B seeds. I mean, it's funny because nothing fundamentally wrong with it the engine the engine kind of tends to I, I don't know why it doesn't let me to add it to the study I mean well um, the study button and um, it's linked to nowhere <laughs> can you link me the the game I, I'll try why, it. Uh, yeah Uh, yeah, I'll put it here in the chat. Okay. So do that. Yeah, it's there in the chat, but it kind of froze here. Okay, I got it in here. Okay. Oh, this was the game. Okay. E3. Yeah. Well, why do want, I mean, this this kind of ruin structure is compensated by the fact that you have the pair of bishops, so no big deal. This is completely playable. And you play bishop e6, c4, mm -hmm. and d take, bishop takes, yeah. castles, knight e2, and b6. It's completely normal. Yeah, um, yeah b6, it's not an awful move. Um, it's not the most principled. That uh, I found it funny that the computer seems to dislike it, or I, I don't know if dislike it, but it's not. It's definitely not not its first choice, mm -hmm. uh, and it's not the most principled move here. Uh, normally, you want to take control of e4 and d5 by means of playing f5 mm -hmm. and c6 yourself. And then you bring the knight to f6, and you have quite good control of the central squares, even though your uh, structure is a bit shattered. Uh, b6, I examined it a bit, and it's actually not... I mean, I couldn't find uh, a clear way for why to, to attain an advantage here. And your plan is also quite sound. You play bishop b7, knight d7, and if possible, you go f5, knight f6. And it didn't seem that bad. If you have to play c6 afterwards, then maybe b6 is not such a great idea. That might be a problem, but I couldn't find so you mean, you, uh, you mean, uh, a clear reason for that. Uh, bishop d5, c6, and then the structure is a little weird. Is that what you think? thinking? Uh, well, but bishop d5... Oh, no, sorry. Oh, yeah, yeah, we have a discovery. Yeah, never mind. Yeah, sorry. Um, yeah, because I remember looking at this, and I and I think, like, it's, it's like, almost never been played in the database, uh, b6. And I just thought, that's a little weird, because it seems not so bad. Mm -hmm. Like, um, so it was just, I was just kind of surprised that, you know, it wasn't played more just to mix things up. Um, and I think, yeah, I, yeah. I did I just didn't. It, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh no! Yet no. I'm sorry. Uh, this time. No, no. Go ahead. Go ahead. I had nothing. No. Um, I mean, it might have to do with the fact that uh, this structure is so common that people just go for it. <laughs> but in this specific situation, I don't see. It. Uh, that there's a big problem with B6. Uh, maybe the most annoying is knight g3, so that it's not so easy to play f5. And if you play f5 now, I don't know what to make of <laughs> B6 because it's not so easy to go bishop b7. But uh, I don't know, maybe g6, and then we go bishop b7. This is not terrible. I mean, I. I, I at least I don't see a, a clear reason why this shouldn't be mm -hmm. playable. Yeah. So there's, but it's this specific issue. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's someone in, in the chat in the stream who who asked. So in, in the main in the main line of uh, oh, in, oh, yeah. oh am I cutting out? 
Yeah. Yeah. yeah there, Could you repeat that? there is somebody in the chat in the stream who asked about the mainline idea of F5 and C6, which you kind of mentioned. Um, he asked, uh, doesn't that make the light, the light square bishop weak? And aren't you worried about that? Uh, yeah, but you're also restricting this guy. And especially you're putting some vital squares uh, in control. Because if you let white too free here, he's just going to go knight c3, castles, e4. Um, he's going to take over the center. And I had to know what we're going to do with with our man with our minor pieces. Uh, if you want to have some perspectives for the knight on b8, I guess you need to put it on f6 somehow. Uh, otherwise, I don't see where we're going to put it. Uh, that's why f5, knight d7, knight f6 uh, so natural, I guess. Um, I mean, your structure is a bit weak, and it's true that you're going to... Um, you're going to weaken this bishop a bit. You're going to restrict it, restrict it. But you're also putting pawns in the way of this bishop. Uh, with the pair of bishops, you usually want to highlight uh, the bishop that your opponent doesn't own. That's another important uh, concept. Your opponent doesn't have the dark square bishop. So you want to make your own dark square bishop your best bishop. <laughs> Um, that's why you usually, in these cases, put the pounds on a color different to the bishop that you own mm. and your opponent doesn't. I see. You make this on this, it's great. Mm. Um, one of the, um, I don't know if we saw those games by Steinitz where he gets a pair of bishops and then makes uh, his. Uh, his bishop, the only one, the, the one he has and his opponent doesn't, by putting all the pawns on different, uh, a different color than his um, extra bishop, so to speak. Uh, maybe we saw those games, I'm not entirely sure. If, if not, I have to put, here, <laughs> put them here at some point. Hello? Yeah, sorry, I'm here. <laughs> yeah, that, that sound was someone in the stream. Yeah, uh, I... the, the guy that asked the question, he said thank you, and he donated uh, some bits. That's what that sound was that you heard. <laughs> oh, okay. okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> yeah, so so you're saying, yeah, so, okay. so B, um, B6. So yeah, in that... this position, I don't... Uh, I don't see anything wrong with. Yeah, sorry. There's a bit of a a bit of a delay between us. So, Hi, I'm sorry. Yeah, there's a bit of a delay between us right oh. now. So um, oh, that, sometimes we talk over each other. But that's I, what com what confused me. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm. I I was just saying. Yeah. So it, it sounds like you kind of. That's kind of what I thought was B six. Like. Um, it's playable. It's not like a blunder or even a mistake. Maybe it's not the ultimate best move here, but I'm, I'm still just a little surprised that you don't, you haven't seen it. Because I, if I remember looking at the database, it's like never played, and I'm just a little surprised about that because it's, it's it's not that bad. Well, actually, you're putting the bishop in quite uh, a decent position, and if you if you're allowed to do that here. And you can get away with a structure like bishop b7, f5, g6, uh, knight d7, knight f6. Well, that's great. Mm. <laughs> if you're allowed to do all this, that's great. I guess the most uh, annoying here must be knight g3. Um, put in some obstacles at least so that if you play bishop b7, you don't get to play f5 so easily. Uh, so I think that's. So you're you're thinking yeah. you're thinking um, you're thinking like b6 knight g3 bishop b7 e4. Uh, yeah, bishop b7 okay. and castle, for example, something like oh, this. Oh, okay. 
Uh, yeah, it's not the end of the world. I mean, it's still playable. Uh, but yeah, it might it might be. Uh, well, may, maybe the most uh, challenging. Still, I. I guess this is completely playable. Um, I don't know if, so you, if, if you can go to seats. From so in this in this uh, in this position, uh, who would you rather be? If I give you the choice of, of white or black, if uh, we go back a move, we, you take white. Yeah, probably do. Okay. I, I mean, I, I don't trust this it's entirely, but <laughs> it's a one's game. Uh, I mean. In fact, I, I, I'm a bit biased because I, I don't really feel comfortable with this variation the whole <laughs> with black. Uh, I take a completely different approach against the Trompolsky. Okay. Uh, yeah, I play his seats. So I give him all the space he wants and I hold on to the um, pair of bishops <laughs> and I start hitting the center. Oh, you, you, so immediately you, you play... You play e6 immediately. So like, bishop yeah, c5, e6. Yeah, like this. And I allow this. <laughs> I, I like, but that's because I like, I, I enjoy restricted positions. <laughs> and then hit in the center. Uh, I feel comfortable with that somehow. <laughs> mm. That's because I'm so used to playing the hedgehog that I don't, oh, right, yeah. uh, <laughs> I don't mind yeah. uh, being restricted anymore. <laughs> I'm just used to it yeah. when I play in black. <laughs> but completely different approach, of yeah. course. Yeah, okay. Okay, yeah, I was just, yeah, I'm just curious about when I, that, because I was building my repertoire against the Trumpowski on that move, whatever move that was, uh, I guess it was move seven and uh, yeah so i was consulting the engine and and the database and neither of them really liked b6 and i was surprised so um i yeah so i i can't remember if i actually chose a move i probably didn't yet i was probably waiting to see what you thought um i'm pretty sure c5 is a main line although i think it transposes with knight bd7 um but because you know you knight b7 and then you play you play oh sorry f5 rather um yeah f5 or knight bd7 but uh, those moves just transpose um is it is it c6 it's a standard way mm. <laughs> and then i guess eventually then we're just going to put the light yeah, bishop it... on e6 yeah. uh, and get that trade uh, knight e7, knight of seats, uh, c seats, queen e7, and bishop e seats. That's quite uh, quite standard play, apparently. Knight e7, castles, knight of seats. Uh, this is the the normal setup, so to speak. And c seats. That way we get both squares under well, pretty decent control. Something like this, and we are prepared to play bishop e6, I guess. And we have nice center control. I mean, this structure is not even such a big deal. I mean, uh, this pawns might be doubled, but f5 gives you good control yeah. over e4, so yeah. I wouldn't mind. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I was just curious about that b6. Yeah, this is. Okay. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah. Um, it's got to be like... it's it's funny that the computer yeah uh, i'm sorry I, I was going to say that it's funny that the computer seems to like the more human way of playing that kind of the, this setup with this it's a fight yeah. um, uh, but it doesn't see anything that wrong with b6 when you leave it uh working for some time so it's playable <laughs> yeah Yeah, yeah, thank you very much. Um, so I guess next lesson, maybe we go over, um, get back to the old looking at my games, um, which... The old format, okay. Yeah, it's been a while. It's been a while <laughs> since we've actually looked at one of my games. Uh, six or seven months, I think. So <laughs> um, I haven't had too many... Yeah, uh, easily. <laughs> I, ha I haven't had too many interesting ones lately. So... Um, hopefully I can, 
yeah, I can get some. It's it's hard. It it takes a while to get a game on classical. So, um, I Ooh, yeah. yeah, it's a little harder. <laughs> and I'm I'm getting about one to two games a day on classical, but um, yeah, nothing too interesting. Well, yet. that that's a good amount mm. anyway, because yeah, it's hard to get a game. It's hard enough to get a game. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you again. Right. Um, so I'll see you next time. Um, and uh, yeah, hope you're hope you're in good health. And oh, well, wait a sec. Well, I, I if we if we yeah. I don't know maybe depending on your schedule I don't know maybe we have to skip a week because uh, getting close to Christmas. But <laughs> I'm I'm That's free. True. Yeah. Um, but whenever yeah. is, is fine with me. So yeah. Well. I'm sorry. What I'm sorry. I said any just got any day. Lovely. Any day is good for me. So that's it. Doesn't matter if if we skip a week or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. This this time of the year, it's kind of the same for me. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. You, you have to deliver all the presents to the boys and girls, right? So the <laughs> your, yeah. your night job is Santa. <laughs> okay. But thanks again, and I will see you next time. Okay. okay, thank you, Tyler. Bye.